got my son for Christmas ah. a um a it was what was it it's like a squirrel and I saw a pair of shoes chaps that will you believe it cost two and a half thousand dollars it won't just run over your plate <laughs> exactly <laughs> which you may want maybe that's what yeah you know maybe this is their niche maybe this is the evil world. golf trolley that we were lucky enough to be at the PGA show uh, at the end of January over in Orlando, Florida. Uh, for those who don't know, it is the biggest golf convention in the world where all the biggest brands descend on the Orlando uh, Convention Center and sort of display what they've got for 2023, uh, chatting with media like us, uh, you know, retailers and sort of punters from around the world who want to come see uh, the best and the greatest. Now, we've already covered some of the major gear releases uh, here on the Gear of the Week show uh, across January. Uh, but we thought we'd spend some time chatting about some of the coolest stuff that we saw, some of the more niche stuff, perhaps stuff that hasn't been released yet, uh, or stuff that was maybe released while we were there. Some of the niche things that, that we really loved. Uh, so we'll start with you, Neil, because for starters, the uh, convention center is huge and there was a lot going on. There was a lot to take in uh, over the two days of the show, uh, two and a half, if you include the demo day. Um, so what was the most exciting and coolest thing you saw uh, on, on the floor? Okay, so for me, the first nomination for some of the coolest stuff I saw is going to be from LA Golf. Now, people listening to this, watching this, might be familiar with LA Golf and the shafts that they, they've produced. They've been used by the likes of Dustin Johnson and Bryson Shambo, who I think are, are, are partners of the uh, of the brand. Um, but now they've come to market with some putters, and these putters are carbon, so first time, I think the first time I've seen that in a putter. I mean, I'm I'm not the putter category expert for golf monthly, so please forgive me if you've you've seen it, but I haven't. Um, and they just from the first sight, you know, when you hear that there's a new brand coming into putters, you think, oh, are they going to do something really funky and out there in terms of the shapes? And I'm not going to like it. But what they've done is the shapes are quite traditional, but the look is out there is funky it's got this kind of gray and black almost like a camo look to it and i just thought this is stand out absolutely stand out golf equipment but it still looks traditional it still looks classic it's the sort of thing that everyone would love to have in their golf bag i thought they really nailed the look of these putters black shafts black grip mm. very stealth like look at um, I think the grips, uh, sorry, the putter, the shafts have been designed to help with the sort of rhythm of the stroke as well. So there's some technology at play within the head, within the shaft, um, and it sort of ticked a lot of boxes for me. I thought I can see them having some, getting some traction with these. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always exciting to see a, a brand, a, a brand that we already knew come to market in a new space in golf. You know, we saw it with, with PXG bringing out a, a golf ball in the last couple of weeks. That wasn't at the show, but just as an example of that sort of buzz around when a brand does that. Sam, I know you saw these as well and you love you love the look of them. Yeah, they were really cool. Um, like Neil just said, like something completely different to everything out there. And I think that's for us um what well, that's what makes something stand out you know yeah we see we see a lot of product and and so when something comes in you know completely new design um new look that that's what kind of gets our attention and you, you know L, L, phg um do it with their marketing it's quite bold and it's quite out there and that's what attracts us to their clubs and their clubs are actually quite clean and understated um but like la golf have done it just through their clubs like the marketing you don't really hear too much about them they're not they, they don't shout about their products a whole lot um obviously having guys like dj and Bru um dj and bryson um using their product is is a big selling point but yeah when when you see the putters especially in the sunshine obviously in orlando there was plenty of that so um at the demo day especially outside on the putting green when the sun shines on those putters they look really cool yeah and it's it's like you said it's one of those brands that i think gear nerds will know a lot about and really enjoy but i reckon they're going to start sort of um trickling out to the masses fairly soon and more people getting involved with it i'm going to bring us on to the other end of the spectrum entirely from golf clubs to accessories specifically head covers and ball markers now i don't want to use the word cool too much in this podcast because <laughs> calling something cool makes it immediately uncool and i feel like sort of my dad when he says something cool you know anyway uh pins and aces make some really cool um ball markers accessories and especially head covers this one i've got here i picked up is sort of from uh it's the colorado state flag uh the inside of it i lived there for a year uh so i thought i'd be cool to pick that up and it's nice quality and something a bit different stands out on the green but their head covers 
are spectacular. You can get sort of collegiate ones if you're out support a specific college team in the States. You can get some ones that look like the Joker from the Batman movies. Um, and I'm a sucker for a good head cover, especially one that just looks a bit different and stands out in the bag. So Pins and Aces stood out for me. Daphne's were there as well, which makes some great hug, uh, head covers. And... Shout out to, actually, Dan, shout out to Daphne's. I got my son for Christmas. Ah. A, um, a, it was, what was it? It was like a squirrel. It sounds, doesn't sound great, but it was, it was, it was, it was <laughs> wait, no, no, a, it a was, head cover that was a, a head cover. A head cover. cover. It wasn't just Not a squirrel, a, I didn't get him a squirrel, no. I, <laughs> I got a squirrel egg cover. Sounds awful. It wasn't. It was brilliant and it was cool and everyone likes it. It's a talking Good. point. Sorry, let's move on. That sounded really weird. <laughs> got my son a squirrel. Anyway, uh, this, these are the kind of things I think we saw at the PGA show. Your head covers, your accessories. That It was great to meet the people who make them and what drives them in golf and what makes them want to create this stuff. It just stands out a little bit. And as much as some manufacturers make great, great head covers, I love picking up one that's just a little bit different and stands out there a little bit more. Yeah, I think also that everyone likes the chance of kind of making their golf bag and their setup a bit more bespoke to them. One of the easiest ways you can do that is with golf head covers. So spending a bit of time doing a bit of research and finding out something that's a bit different, a bit cool, that speaks to you, who you yeah. are as an individual. Um, there's lots of ways to do that now. Yeah, that was something yeah. actually I noticed um, from watching the golf this past weekend was seeing Rory's bag and all his head covers are like personalized head covers. I think yeah. there's a dog, his dog from growing up maybe on his yeah. driver. And then he has a European Ryder Cup head cover. And um, I thought that was quite cool to see like, you know, one of the biggest names in golf using using the head covers that he wants and rather than I just the head covers. And you want to stand out from your mates as well. Someone, one of my dad's mates, the golf club I play out, is nicknamed Wolfie, and he's obviously got a wolf head cover, so that's, that's very cool, you know. And you can you can get a squirrel as well, Tappers, so that's uh, that's great, and it's nice to stand out. <laughs> I don't uh, think it might not have even been a squirrel. I think it might have been something else. I can't remember <laughs> what it was though. Uh, but that's what I love. I kept going back to that pins and aces stand. I just thought it was really. I, I can't get the synonym get my thesaurus out for the word cool but uh across that bridge later the apparel section was vast at the pga show wasn't it tappers and we saw a brand called radmore based out of seattle in washington which makes some really high quality again slightly more bespoke stuff true links wear who are really embracing the sort of uh clean aesthetic look and golf fashion is changing at such a pace you can see all the, there's so many gaps in the market for it, which is why we saw so many different brands out there and for me, it's exciting. I love different golf fashion now. It's becoming a bit more relaxed. But if you still want to have that sort of more formal look, that's there for you as well. And again, like we chatted about head covers, this is something you can really, what you wear and how you feel on the golf course, something you can do for yourself to help yourself stand out or feel better on the course. And we kind of saw that in full flow, I think. Yeah, that's that's why we need the tour players to push the boundaries a bit. It's just, you know, the right players who feel like it's something they want to do, we should be embracing them because... But, the tour pros that really push things from a an apparel perspective open up a new category i think and you this is what you see you see lots of brands rushing in to kind of make state their claim within different categories where it's now acceptable to wear these things on the golf course so it, it, especially if you're living in in um in america you've got some great options in terms of apparel that are different from what your, your mates are wearing um and i mean a lot of very high quality stuff as well so if you want to spend a few quid on golf apparel you can i mean i'm sure you can do that or a few dollars you can do that you can spend a few dollars if you need to yeah absolutely um golf joggers i've got myself a pair of the true links wear all day joggers now as well gonna see how that goes down on my home golf, uh, my home golf course in the uk that'll be fun see the captain looking at me funny if i got my ankles out um I want to talk about some shoes really briefly. I am the shoe man here at Golf Monthly, the shoe guy, the tester. And I saw a pair of shoes, chaps, that, will you believe it, cost two and a half thousand dollars. Now, this was from a brand called Box Two, which had launched on the day of the show, so uh, back into January this year. And I thought, wow, I've got to go have a look at this. Jim Furyk wears Box Two shoes, I believe now. Um, that was the, sort of their big announcement on the day. Now, two and a half grand for a pair of shoes, alligator leather and they sort of have that effect on them you know vegans and vegetarians look away now um sort of a classic brogue style shoe with it you get you know you do get a kit like you know a brush and some polish and it comes in this beautiful box and with your name on it and stuff like that but 
and they have cheaper shoes than this, by the way. This is just their flagship shoe. But for a new brand to drop themselves on the market like that at the PGA show with a flagship two and a half thousand dollar shoe, Sam, I thought was kind of crazy. I know you went, I know you went to go see these guys as well. Yeah. It was a nice enough shoe, don't get me wrong. I don't think I would rep them with my joggers, for example. <laughs> I don't think they go so well with that. However, uh great to see a bit of innovation and something really out there, I think. Yeah, and you know, in in terms of innovation, I'm not, you know, they're a very classic looking shoe. They look, yeah, you know, they they almost just look like a, it, it's, and it's hard to say, but like a higher end profile of like the FootJoy Premier Series. So that yeah. classic looking, like you said, Brogue style, a lot of them had shielded tip and, and stuff like that. But yeah, for two and a half grand, I wasn't convinced. I picked them up and as someone who kind of wears um sometimes those more traditional shoes so like the premier series or the g4 galavanters um these were nearly double the weight of, yeah. <laughs> of those shoes and which I... turns kind of turned me off immediately but um they're, yeah, they're a cool looking shoe and they'll appeal to some maybe maybe more so in the states where they're riding in carts a bit more and yeah. and they're not so heavy on your feet walking 18 holes or 36 holes but um yeah they they were they were interesting sort of like if the premier series uh, sort of came out of the Everglades in Florida and, and sort of morphed into this new different type of shoe that some was sort of half alligator, half shoe. Uh, it was definitely pretty cool. They got some other great shoes as well, Boxy. That was just their flagship one. Uh, I met the guy from Squares Golf Shoes as well, which a really interesting thought. And they're really big in the States. So, you know, if you're watching and listening in the States, forgive me for being quite naive on this shoe because I think it's a pretty big brand out there. But for us in the UK, a little bit rarer, as they say on the tin, a square toe which looks bizarre at, uh, at a dress as you are, as you're looking down your feet, because we're so used to sort of curved ends of our shoe. But scientifically, they've done a lot of research, better for the golf swing, more stable, and a little bit less foot fatigue as well. So I got to try them on. They were comfortable. Can't get over that look, Tappers. I don't know if you've seen Squares golf shoes. I'm not, I can't get over it. Um, I, I also tried them on at yeah. the show. Um, and... Yeah, I, that probably wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be for me, but they were really comfortable. I could I so could comfortable. tell that they were very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're also big in pickleball. Um, our squares golf shoes, and there was a pickleball court at the show. It was. Did you see this? Now, did either of you know, either of you know what pickleball was prior to coming to the show? I I'd heard of it. I, I can't say I'd ever witnessed the game or or seen a court for myself, but I'd heard of it. It's great. It's uh, for those who don't know, I call it ta like table tennis, like like big size table tennis. Like you're on, you've been shrunk and put on the table, like tennis, badminton, <laughs> and table tennis all put together in this fantastic game. But I, I couldn't quite work out why the court was there at the PJ show. I think maybe a lot of golfers play pickleball. It was also just nice. Yeah, there's a, a crossover, isn't there? Yeah, because um, it's nice and easy. Uh, if you've got a decent hand eye, which most golfers do, easy to pick up. All ages can play it because there's not a heck of a lot of movement going on. Um, and it was really popular. There was queues to have a little rally on the pickleball court. So I enjoyed that as well. And Squares are making some pickleball shoes, which is very interesting indeed. Um, Tappers, I want to chat to you about uh, a golf ball we saw that's specifically designed for the long drive championship or for long drivers. Um, uh, talk us through this. It's from Bridgestone and it's one of the, one of the new ones going in their line. And um, a really interesting development, I thought, from a brand as big as Bridgestone to go this niche with a ball. Well, I don't, I don't know whether it's designed specifically for long drivers as such. It has been designed with input from the World Long Drive Association, so they've put, they've sort of helped in the design process to come up with a ball that is focused on helping people hit the ball further. Now, it's important to say this golf ball comes in with a recommended retail price. I think in the US of around about thirty dollars, maybe like a hair under thirty dollars. So that's yeah. the kind of segment of the market that it sits in uh i saw it for the first time at the show uh hit it in in florida then came back and tested it probably when i got back to the uk and it's a really good solid golf ball but what, what it is is an all-rounder for me it's an all-rounder okay. it's a good so, very solid all-round golf ball feels better than i thought it was going to feel more responsive off the wedge and off the putter provided pretty good spin control for a golf ball at that price point what it wasn't for me was it wasn't outstanding in terms of distance. I hit it alongside a Titus Velocity golf ball, and it was remarkable how similar mm. the data was between those two. So it's a, it's good off the tee. It does offer good distance. But I think, you know, for me, when I read the, the sort of marketing blurb, 
I'm expecting to be adding a bit of extra, you know, finding a bit of extra distance. I didn't find a hell of a lot of extra distance, but what I did find was a golf ball that performs well in all areas. So I was quite impressed actually. And I, I and you know, it, it looked, this odd thing to say. I, I oh, hold on. Neil Tapper with this. an odd thing to say. Sit down, everybody. I like, I like a golf ball that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> given that the vast majority of golf balls i play are white and round with dimples <laughs> it's an odd thing to say it but is. this just had a, a a premium almost like a premium look to it not quite the same um sort of a color as a as a urethane colored golf ball not quite that sort of dull, slightly dull white yes. but not far off and so it, it, it out of the packet it looked to me like a more expensive golf ball than it was that's enough of that but that was a Bridgestone e9 i think it's available now and uh, can i give it a go I didn't realize it's gonna be such a good all-rounder at, at that sort of price as well mm. uh sam trolleys now um i'm a, the trolley guy at golf month here as much as i'm the shoe guy uh yep. zero friction had a very cool trolley that has sort of no how to describe it no handle the bag just sits it's the bag sits on it and it's just two wheels and it follows you around it's a remote one uh and their stand was very cool it <laughs> their stand was almost i didn't get a picture of it frustratingly so you have to take my word for this but um almost like a crufts display you know like a dog show display <laughs> where it's got the little it's got a little ramp they can go over it didn't quite have yeah, boots and such that. but it was like an obstacle course with these trolleys, basically. And the, the zero friction one, the remote one, the follow one, looked fantastic. Super, um, super slim line, you know, not too obvious. Your bag just sits on it and follows you around and sort of a little bit different to the, the larger models you get from, you know, Stuart Motor Caddy, Power Caddy, et cetera, that are a conventional looking trolley with a handle, as you expect. So I liked that. Uh, but Sam, you want to talk about one that um, you saw that uh, a couple of members of staff of this company were just sort of walking it up and down the aisles at the PGA show, handing some stuff out, making a big deal about their product. Yeah, and, um, you know, it, it's obviously a new product, but it was also my first time at the PGA show. And for a split second, I thought someone was just standing at the top conducting this remote control trolley, remote control trolley across, like, the whole continent. <laughs> just looking um, over the entire convention. Exactly. I, I was slightly confused as to what was going on. Um, but, yeah, a brand called Hello Caddy, um have released a trolley um that does follow you and we've seen that before um trolleys that do follow you around um so this essentially works from a sensor um that gets put on the trolley and then it, it's linked to i think it's a clip that goes on your belt or or your skirt or whatever you're wearing and um yeah it will follow you around and it's quite it's quite clever in the way that i ask the question how does that work if you know you're walking with your playing partner and and he kind of gets in front of you and she said it will just cut off um to basically stop the trolley running someone over it, it won't just run over your plane <laughs> exactly <laughs> which you may want maybe that's what yeah you know maybe this is their niche maybe this is the evil over. golf trolley that you know attacks playing partners who are a bit slow or, or keep talking to you too makes, much once dan makes his fifth birdie on, in a row <laughs> you can run him yeah. over with the trolley exactly yeah a thing I spotted this year, the trend, especially for the American market, is remote trolleys. Now, a lot of more people in America are starting to walk, I think, but they're going in for that premium market. They're going for the remote one rather than a push or a conventional electric caddy trolley, whatever you guys call them over there. Um, and so Motor Caddy, Power Caddy, Stewart, MGI, Zero Friction, uh, the one you just mentioned, Sam, of all bringing out new remote trolleys this year, whether they're Bluetooth follow capacity, uh, or remote sort of Bluetooth remote uh, Alphard as well. I spotted out there look look like a great product as well. This is the trend this year. So again, UK, US, wherever you are in the world now, but especially in the US, if you're after a remote trolley, a remote electric caddy this year. Pretty much every major brand is bringing out a brand new one. So go and check those out and see which one uh, you like the look of the best because they all look really cool. I'm looking forward to testing a handful of those this year. Um, so we spoke about some more niche uh, brands there, but it's worth talking about the big brands and what they were. Uh, we're launching or or showcasing rather uh, this year shout out to the massive um paradigm head from callaway that was sort of a deconstructed showing their uh, uh their 360 carbon crown their driver this year and at titleist booth was all the scotty cameron head covers loved that uh neil you spotted a few though from some of the bigger brands that were either launching something new or just showcasing something a bit different from from their mainline products Okay, first, a uh, quick shout out to Ping, and they brought out some new shapes with their PLD putters. I just thought they looked super premium, absolutely fantastic. Ping, to me, have always made 
really good putters. They probably don't get maybe the level of attention, I think, that they maybe, even though it's Ping and Ping's a big golf brand, I think when people think of Ping, maybe they think of, of irons and drivers and how forgiving they are. Just try, have a look at the putters. They're great. <laughs> they are, they very, are very great. Good. Take yeah. Neil's word for it. They're gorgeous. They're, they are like yeah. one of those putters you just yearn to have in the bag, whether, you know, whether you like simple classic putters or not i think they're awesome you're right just go check them out check them out and then the other one that i noticed was i went onto the titleist stand and i saw they they sometimes do this at the pga show where they produce a, a sort of a, a short smaller run almost like a limited edition of mm. um their irons in a dark finish so i looked i saw the t100 t200 irons in a black finish and these these are irons i would love to own cam right? smith vibes yes yeah, Cam Smith the whole vibes. Cam Smith aesthetic I'm well about it I've got two issues right okay. one I don't think I'm good enough so not, <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that's true Tappers I'm not sure come on Neil not, you're a good guy not only yeah. is my ball striking not um I just uh, they sort of slightly make me nervous looking at a dress because they just feel and <laughs> look a little bit more compact so it gives sure, me the, yeah they do but it's the same reason I don't put a black wedge in the bag. I'd love to because I just think they look fantastic and they make, they look really cool. But at the same time, I think when push comes to shove, <laughs> I probably would rather have a chrome finish. It's, it's um, like white golf trousers. Like you got to be a player to have white yeah. golf trousers on, in my opinion. So yeah, I get it. They look great though. The, the yeah, club says not the white trousers. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Um, and then yeah, and then for me, it was just about you know whether they fit into the rest of my, you know, something like that would fit in with the rest of my bag, which is tends to be a little bit more. I always think that the black wedges look good against chrome irons. Mm, yeah. We have to go mm, black. That is black. a good question. We're leaning into really nerdy golf chat again here, lads. We've had, yeah. we've had golf ball <laughs> color chat. Now we're into, will my black wedges go with my uh, chrome irons? But I like one, it. Yeah. One more on that for. nerdy golf topic. If you're a circle T lover, the stand at tight list was unbelievable. And um, I don't know if we can chuck a couple of pictures up on the screen here that I might have taken, but they had the models that all their kind of flagship professionals play, their exact replicas with head covers. And um, yeah, as a bit of a putter nerd myself, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Well, I think that will about wrap this episode up, chaps, before we get even deeper into I mean, it is the gear of the week show. We're allowed to get nerdy about golf gear. Otherwise, you know, we're in the wrong jobs otherwise. Uh, but some fascinating stuff um, we hope you we've brought your attention to uh, and some limited edition stuff and some of the bigger brands. Uh, but that will about wrap it up for this week. Sam Diaz, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Neil Tappin, thank you very much. Great quiz question again. And I will, I'm going to start the records as of today. <laughs> Always my pleasure to catch you out, Dan. I look, I look forward to it every time. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. We'll see you next time. Yeah.